welcome. Uh, I think we're going to start, Tiana, are we? Yes, we are. Okay. On your call. All right. All right, so I shall start. Um, we are talking about the single touch payroll process using IMSTP. Um, this is an easy solution, um, so we're going to be talking about that today. So we have online Tiana Tran. Hi, Tiana. And Hi, my name is Deborah Thompson. I am a BAS agent and a bookkeeper. So um, I have been playing with the product and, and using it. So our agenda is to look at the ATO and single touch payroll to start with and then look at the um, IMSTP package that is, is available for businesses to be using and just to give you a look around how it works. So let's begin. Um, so ATO and the single touch payroll. And I'm sure you have heard of single touch payroll. That is why you are here today. So it's the next step in the ATO's plan for payroll reporting. It is real-time reporting. So that means that every time you do a pay, you actually tell the ATO about it. So it is absolutely real time, but because it's real time, what the ATO have said, well, we don't want to change what you're naturally doing, what your natural business practices are. So it is something that is on the end of what you naturally do in business, which is pay wages. There's no changes to how you pay or when you pay. Um, they're not trying to change that at all. That absolutely stays exactly the same as you have previously done. And there's no changes to the obligations to the employer of the employer. And what that means is the ATOS single touch payroll doesn't change what fair work has said you have to pay people. So it's not about awards, it's not about that, it's just the actual process of, of creating that pay and paying someone and then you're telling the ATO. So what you are telling the ATO is that you're telling the ATO the employee's wages, the tax that you've taken out of their wages and their superannuation. Um, you're telling the ATO that each time you pay, but you can also tell them before you pay. So for example, that means that say you want to have Christmas holidays and you, you know, naturally, you know, maybe you do two weeks um, holiday pay for people before they get paid. You let the ATO know about that, again, so that it is um, before they get paid that's fine. What the ATO don't want is they don't want to be notified after you pay them. They want to notif be notified when you pay them or before. Um, you can Obviously, we're going to be sending it via the Gov reports, the IMSTP ledger. Um, employees view their year-to-date information via a MyGov account that they set up for themselves. They don't have to have a MyGov account, but the ATO are certainly recommending it to them. And that's they can, what they then can check their uh, payslip against what is in the MyGov account. The employers report the superannuation liability and the super funds, at the moment it seems to be about within 10 days, that the super funds will report the, the payment of that liability. So it certainly is recommended that you get your uh, superannuation guarantee payments up to date uh, because that certainly will be something that the ATO will be looking at and will be highlighted. STP replaces your payment summaries. So if you haven't started single touch payroll as of today, then what you will be doing is for this financial year you'll be doing payment summaries and sending them to the tax department how you have always done in the past. But from next year, you won't be doing payment summaries for anyone, which is good and bad, I think. So the sorts of things that we're telling the ATO or the sorts of things that you need to check and review is you need to look at the employee's details. You need to make sure that you have their tax file number, their address, their phone number, their date of birth. And there also is the need of an employee ID but what is the actual software will take care of that. Um, 
they will it will automatically create it. As I mentioned, there's no changing to when you pay anyone. Um, if you pay weekly, you still pay weekly under single touch payroll. If you pay monthly, it's exactly the same. And if you perhaps have staff where you pay some weekly and you pay some monthly, that is still the same. You just notify the ATO each time you pay any staff member. A pay event must contain at least one employee record. So again, what that means is that if you're going to do an out of sync pay event because perhaps somebody's leaving or you're giving them maybe a Christmas bonus or something like that, you do the pay event and you send it straight away to the ATO so um, it can take care of that. The things that you're sending, as I've already mentioned, is your gross wages and what you're sending them is their year to date figure. Um, if there's terminations, anything like that. Allowances, any allowances that you're paying because of awards um, or you know maybe you have car allowances and travel allowances and phone allowances, things like that. Um, they are in the STP and they are either part of gross wages if you're paying PAYG and super on them or they are um, identified separately as allowances. Your PAYGW, which is your pay as you go withholding, the tax that you've taken out of the employee's wages. Again, what you have taken out over the year, it's the year to date figure. And the superannuation that has been accrued, uh, again, year to date. And that also includes, you're also informing them of any salary sacrifice that you may have staff that are that are putting into their super themselves um, and the reportable employer uh, employee superannuation. So when you lodge a pay event, and that's what it's called from the ATO's point of view, um, a pay run or a payroll is called a pay event from uh, ATO. You're sending the year to day wages, you match your payroll categories to the categories that the ATO have got set up. Um, you're required to report, as I said, on, on or prior to payday and you may lodge a multiple pay events on the same day. So again, if we go with the scenario that you've got um, fortnightly pays and monthly pays and then you know every now and then they're all going to end up on the same day. So you can absolutely lodge more than one event on each day as long as it's got one record in it. Then come the end of the year, you actually advise the ATO of your final pay event. So when you've come up to your last wage that you're doing for the year, then basically it's a tick, which is really great, and you don't have to send payment summaries to anyone. What um, the ATO do, will do is they will send an income statement to the MyGov, and when you have put in your final, final event, um, they will actually mark it as tax ready. So that means the employees, when they go to the MyGov, they can see that it's tax ready and they can go to their accountant and do their tax. There are, um, there, or there is an authority that you need to complete when you are lodging a pay event with the ATO and this is a declaration like all declarations that you do, whether you do it on your BAS um, or TPAR or other forms, is that the information is true and correct and that the person who is declaring that is authorised to lodge that. So of course you can authorise you know, a member of your staff or you may have your BAS or your tax agent do it. Um, they of course are going to have to get that authority. So with the um, payroll categories, if we have a look here, um, you'll see we've got the PAYG type, then we've got the frequency weekly, total hours, and then you've got your base pay. So what your base pay is going to include all those things in gross payments. So an hourly wage and overtime if you pay penalty rates. Any um, allowances that have got PAYG and super are normally in your gross payments. Then you have, there's a section for your PAYG withholding which is the tax that you're taking out of somebody's pay and then your um, SGC superannuation. And what is lovely about this software is that you're putting in the information per pay 
and you're just putting it in what you would normally put for the pay and the software is adding it up for you. Um, so that makes it very easy to, you know, to get your year to dates correct. You've also got fringe benefit uh, tax, if there's any fringe benefit tax. Now that might only be put in once a year when you get that information from the accountant in, in April. There's also the reportable um, employee superannuation, which you can put per pay if you're taking it out of somebody's wage uh, per, per pay and sending it to the super, or again, you can leave it to the end of the year. Then you've got the Commonwealth Development um, Education Payment, I think that's totally called. Uh, again, if you know that, you know, if you have that, you'll, you'll understand that. Then any exempt foreign income, if that is, um, part of the pays that you do. And then what you have is six sections for allowances. And so the ATO has limited these allowances. So as I mentioned, if you pay an allowance and you pay super and PAYG, then normally that goes into the gross payments. But if you have um, allowances in these five sections, then uh, you separate them out and put them in here in allowances. So your car expense, um, your transport, which is an award, transport payments up to the reasonable amount. Laundry allowances, which also include, you know, if you're paying uniform allowances. Um, the award overtime meal allowance, so again, and normally these are related to the awards that you're paying. Um, so not everybody has them, but if you, you know, if you're under those awards from Fair Work, then you will know um, hopefully about them. And then the domestic or overseas travel allowance above the reasonable limit and the overseas accommodation allowance. And then there's other for things that you believe that you need to report but don't have a section for. So you pick um, those categories, what are appropriate to what wages you're paying. Then the other section is the um, deductions. And there's only three deductions that need to be on payment summaries. Um, that is if you're deducting union fees out of somebody's wage for them, if you're paying association fees out of their wage, or if you've got workplace giving. Now that normally is a charity that is um, a deduct deductible gift recipient uh, to be allowed that is actually put on the payment summaries. Then we also have, um, when we're looking for these, we need to go to our STP uh, allowance categories. And so the pay run is that, that slide I've just talked about. And then um, the, STP, the IM STP has separated out the employment termination payment and the lump sum payments. Now they have specific requirements, um, the lump sums as you can see, are regarding unused annual leave and long, and long service leave. The lump sum B is long service leave if you earned it before 1978, which probably most of us um, don't, we may have used it. Lump sum D is a for, re, for a redundancy. So if you are paying a redundancy, that is for the tax-free portion. And lump sum E is if you're paying uh, for back pay. So, you, you know, the prior year and you missed out giving someone an, an increase in their wages. That's what that's for. And then the employment termination payment, or you might know it as an ETP, this is for um, a, bigger uh, a bigger termination. Generally, it is redundancies uh, that are involved that may have ETPs. There's a few other things, but obviously I would encourage you to be looking at the ATO information about that to make sure that you um, that you are. It's generally, um, if, if there's a redundancy, so things like in lieu of notice might go into there. So you would definitely need to be looking or getting advice um, from your HR or your tax accountant or your BAS agent. So now we come to employers and employees. So. The employer checklist, basically you want to make sure that all your employees are up to date. Now if you're starting from the 1st of July, it makes it very easy because you know that you know the first pay is just the first pay, there's nothing else before it. 
Again, as I mentioned, the superannuation payments, I would encourage you to make sure that they are up to date because there is going to be um, that checking from the super fund telling you, telling the ATO when it was paid. If you do voluntary agreements with contractors, generally that's in the building and construction industry, then you will find that you can also do these through the IMSTP. Um, it isn't mandatory, you don't have to do it, uh, but it is, is there for you uh, to do and, and if you're already putting them through payroll, you might find that you want to do that. You need to check who's going to be your authorised representatives. So as I mentioned, you need to authorise, um, if you're going to have your BAS and your tax agent uh, fill in the pay event and send it to the ATO, then they have to be an authorised representative or it may be a director of the business or maybe you have got one of your staff that you're, you're going to give the authority to. Because all of those, whoever's going to be lodging, needs to um, make sure that the ATO has their details. You need to obtain a unique uh, software ID and this from the software and I will show you where you get that and then you need to tell the ATO which software you're using. So it's called an ATO software nomination. So we will cover that. What it means for the employees, not really very much. Um, there's no change in how they receive their wages. They still need to receive a pay slip and that's because that is a fair work requirement, um, not the ATO's requirement, but a fair work. The employees go to MyGov and they can review their year-to-date wages and tax and check that, um, you know, compare it to their pay slip. They, MyGov will reflect the changed information each time you do a pay and MyGov will have the tax ready label when you finalise the year's wages. So there's no pay, uh, payment summaries sent to them, they, they don't have to receive anything from you at the end of the year that is telling them what their gross wage is because they're going to get that through MyGov and because you're giving them a pay slip and those year to date figures are on your pay slip. Super funds will, as I said, will advise the ATO. So if we have a look at the interactive uh, account manager, the IM for STP, um, it is, there's two levels of service. So there's the manual data entry of payroll and or you can upload um, a CSV file. So you can put that, so you can, might be doing something else, create a CSV file and import it into the IMSTP. Um, there's also the uh, IM ledger, uh, business ledger I should say, I've got to remember the word business ledger, which um, allows you to do that as well. It has a little few other things in it, the business ledger. And um, there will be more webinars about that. This, the product we're sort of concentrating on tonight is the, the, the basic one. It has separate advisor access, so you can, you know, um, give your BAS and tax agents so they can, you know, help you with it. You've got client management via the Gov reports, and it is catering for the micro and the small business. So we're looking at the one to four employees, or perhaps you are just the directors of the business that needs to report single touch payroll. So the first thing you need to do, of course, is to sign up and you will see that at the moment there is a free trial on either of the um, versions of the IM, so the IM Business Ledger or the IM STP Reporting Module. So you just need to you know, fill in all your details with that. When you uh, enter GovReports, you need to put in a username and password like we have, have always done with all of our software. But there's also the two-factor authentication. So the two-factor authentication means that you have the choice of them either emailing you a code or sending a code to your phone. To give extra security and extra privacy, of course, because you're dealing with wages. So you need to make sure that, that you know, is, everybody can't get into it. So that extra two-factor authentication is great. Um, this is when I signed in, this is, is what I saw and uh, you'll see that there's a little logo there that says I am 
and when you click on that, that then takes you to a list of businesses. So the interesting thing with the um, STP module and the business ledger module is that you can have more than one business set up on it. So if you do run two or three businesses, um, you can absolutely set them all up with this and uh, use them all for your different payrolls. So the business step, you go to your settings and you look at the organisation and you can set up your logo, your business details, your financial year, those sorts of things. This is also where you find the software nomination to tell the ATO. Then you can go to my account and set up your profile and your security settings and email settings and, and look at your email log. This is what the ledger looks like when you open it and you can see um, you know, there's a graph as you're doing things that obviously will be changing. So this is the, the uh, dashboard. When you want to look at the uh, organisation and the preferences and the ATO so uh, software nomination, this is where it is. And if we go to the next screen, this is the organisation profile. So this is where you can set up your business details. You can um, lock files, you can set up tax codes, so if GST or you know, if there's other different things that you need to set, and this is more for the business, not the um, STP module. There's email templates, the financial year management, this is where you can go and roll over the year once you've finished each um, financial year, where you can uh, have information for your accountants and where you can go to your ATO software nomination and you can add the image um, with a little green button. You can add the image for your, you know, your business logo. So with the software nomination, um, you just click on the, soft, on the software nomination here and this information comes up. And what it's telling you is it's showing you the biz, your business name and your ABN. It's giving you the software details, so the Gov reports, their ABN and a software ID that is unique. Um, and then it gives you the telephone number that you can ring up the ATO and nominate the um, IAM STP module as your uh, STP information that you're going to be using. You can also, if you already have a business portal, you can go into the access manager there and nominate the software from there. Um, either is acceptable. When you go into my account, and my account um, again basically gives you the information so you set it up for personally. So each person that you're allowing into the file can um, look and, and set up their own my account. So you can put a photo there, you can put the email address you want uh, to be attached, you know, to that you're going to log in with. So the process is that you're going to create employees. You're then going to create your pay run for each employee. In that, you're going to match your payroll categories to STP categories. You're going to save and send the pay slips because, you, you know, you need to send pay slips. Obviously, then you need to pay the wages. And from that information, you then turn that in or create a pay event. You generate a report and you authorise that report and you lodge it with the ATO and then you go back and start again. So it is a, you know, an easy process once you get used to it, like everything. Once you've done it a couple of times, uh, it won't be difficult. So creating um, employees. Again, on the left side of the dashboard, you will see that there is a list that you can pick. You select your payroll, then you select employees, and you add or edit the employees. Uh, you can also select payroll events from there um, to do the lump sums and the terminations and just a normal pay run. Um, and you can ex uh, select payments to acknowledge payments that you've made to your employees. When you are creating, of course, you're adding in their name, address, phone number, email, etc., uh, tax file number. 
So what you'll see is this is a typical new employee that we're setting up. You're able to pick their residence, residence states, which is very important if you do uh, work in holiday makers. You need to make sure that you have them identified because they are taxed on a different basis than um, your other employees. What's their status? Are they full-time, uh, you know, part-time casual? What's their tax file number? What uh, payment summary they would normally get? Again, because the working holiday makers get their own. The employee ID is automatic. The tax file number, obviously, you're getting off the tax file declaration. The Australian business number is if you are doing your uh, voluntary agreements. You then also have the information for the tax file number and uh, what basically transposing a tax deck into here to make sure that people are getting the right uh, taxing information. So again, the um, idea is, is that you, as you are onboarding these details, you don't then need to send in a tax file declaration to the uh, tax department because you're doing it through the software. Then you create a pay run. So you, you've added the employees, you add the pay run, you send the email payslip to the employees, you pay the wages, you generate the STP payroll event and you verify it and you send it for an authorization if um, you're not the person lodging and you need or if, if I, for example, if I was lodging it for you, I'm the BAS agent, I need the business owner to give it, be giving me authorization that I can lodge it and then I lodge the report and would send you back the receipt that's going to come back. So again, we go to our payroll and to our pay run, we uh, come up with all our previous pay runs, whatever we've got into the system and we can import a CSV file or we can just add a new pay run. So we need to put in each employee. Again, as I said, if you, if you have some other system and you can bring in a CSV file, then you of course don't have to do this manually. You add your date um, and the pay period that you're paying. So now I've caught up to the machine. Um, so you can obviously pick again if it's weeknight, weekly, fortnightly, monthly, whatever is the appropriate period that you're paying for. And what I really like about this is it does work out your tax and uh, your super for you. So again, you pick what, whether they're tax free, what frequency, how many hours did the person do and what's their normal base pay. So once you put in the base pay, you'll see that it works out the tax and the super. You then fill out any uh, anything else you need. And in this instance, I've given these people a uniform allowance. So I've set it up and I'm saying that it is subject to PAYG and super. And so what you'll perhaps notice is that the PAYG and super changes as I put in the amount that I am paying for the uh, allowance. If I had deductions, then I'd also put that in. And you can see that I have, uh, that adds all the information. I can then save and send it. So I can send it to the employee. So you, you know, if you've got the payslip already done and sending it to the employee and then it comes back and when I click on it, on the screen it tells you there and you'll see that little green there is it tells you that it's sent and it also gives you dialog boxes of as you are doing different things with that wages. So then if I want to record my payment, I can put that information in there. It's telling me what I need to pay. Um, I can tell you what bank account I've paid it from, if there's any reference that I want to uh, attach it to and then I can record the payment. Then when I go back to my payslip, you'll see that it now says paid and there's another line on that pay, uh, payslip to tell me that it's all been done.
when I look at my pay run, as I mentioned to you, you could import a CSV file, and so that is that little um, downloading, uh, very typical, you know, little graphic there, so that you add your CSV through there. Um, you can also add a pay from there, and you can refresh your screen if you're if you don't think you're getting what you need to see. Then you can edit your pay run. So, for example, if I uh, the employee is going, or I want this to be the final event, what you do is when you get before you get to the save and send section, there is notes, and you click on the others, and you've got the choice of do you want to, um, you know, terminate this person, or do you want to indicate that it's a final event, or do you want to, you know, add you know, something, an attachment when you're sending it uh, to the employee. So all of that is on that pay run information. The payslip also allows you to clone that pay so that, you know, to save you um, doing information, it's, it's putting it in again. And also, as I mentioned, you can attach documents. This is what payslip looks like that you are emailing. So um, it looks really great. Looks really professional, tells them everything that they've got and their year-to-date information. So that year-to-date information is what they can look at the MyGov and see that it matches. There, um, you can record the, the payment as I mentioned and that basically when you come in to pay one, there is a record payment and that's what you click on. And this is the information that you're that you're putting in, it's telling you how much to do, as I said, and you can add a reference and record that payment. And then, as I mentioned, the pay slip now acknowledges that it's paid and also it has got the uh, chain of events of how you've done things on that pay. find that very useful, it's very nice, I like it that it's um, doing that. Again, you've also got the downloading um, a CSV, you've got the refresh, you've got the add, you've got the more and you can go in and edit if you need to change something. So when you go into the ed editing and adding, you'll also find that you can, um, there's a payroll button there where you can put in lump sum information. So if you are paying someone a termination that is more complex than, than they've just resigned, you're able to put that um, lump sum payment or that employment termination in through there. You'll also notice that on the side of the dashboard, there's also there where you can put it in. So again, the software is friendly because it gives you more than one way to put something in. And that always, you know, that's really great because sometimes we might forget uh, how we did it the first time we go to do it. Again, as I mentioned, the termination um, employee that you can come on the pay run till their last pay run when you're paying them the last lot of uh, money that they need. When you click on here on others, you'll get that do you want to fill cessation date? So, you know, the day that they are leaving. So um, it's very easy. Sometimes, again, as I said, sometimes you may forget. So I would encourage you always to click when there are different choices of buttons uh, to click on those and see what it, what it does. So once you've created the pay run, the next step then is to create the STP pay event. And the STP pay event, so again, you click on your payroll, it takes you to prepare STP and what you do is you put the period that you are trying to uh, tell the tax department about. Now I've only got one employee there which happens to be myself, um, but obviously if you had four employees, they are all going to be listed in there because you put them in as that pay run, you put a pay run in for each of them. You then come to the um, prepare the STP and you look at the reporting information the employees and the declaration. So again, if I go back to the reporting information, that's telling you what period you're looking for, how much you're reporting, then your employees will give you a list and your declaration 
we you are saying that I am the authorised person to lodge this and if it is all fine it will lodge. If in this case I have an error I can then save it as a draft, go and fix my errors and come back in and lodge it. And so what you'll see there it says that it is a draft and it is sitting in my saved uh, report so I'm able to then go fix what I needed to fix and come back and lodge. So um, as I mentioned this is the prepare STP under the payroll um, again on the side of the left hand side and it's got STP payroll events. I've clicked on that. This is my screen. I put in the dates that I need to. Uh, the employees have come up and I have hit view. And when I hit view, sorry, when I hit view, what it does is it shows me the payroll event for me for the employee. And so you've got that information. So that's another check if you want to make sure that the information has come across correctly. Again, under this same um, left-hand side, we've got payroll transaction journals, and this is just to show you what happens, what journals that are created. So it's showing you the debit and the credits um, that is appropriate for each of the pays that are there. Then, if we look at the um, STP pay event, we've got the generate report, and when we click on the generate report. This is where it comes again to uh, where you can lodge. So it's showing you the reporting information, the employees that you're going to be including in this lodgement, and then the declaration to say uh, please lodge. If you have any errors, then that's where those errors you can uh, will when you try and lodge it because it won't lodge with errors. Then you can fix your 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 errors and come back in here into the saved reports and lodge the selected ones. Uh, very simply, basically pick the one you want and hit the little red button that says lodge. And then you um, also have a send for review. So again, as mentioning that if I was the BAS agent and I was sending it to you for you to authorise it, I can um, do it from this screen and send it to the business owner and say, please, you know, authorize this. It, you know, tell me is everything okay with you know with what you're expecting. This is my lodgement receipt. So this is the acknowledgement that I've got that the information has been lodged, and obviously it's going to be in the software so that if there's any question um, and you're able to give that to the ATO and say, look here, this is when I lodged it. This is the time, um, and so again, they can check up on it if there's some issue with it. Now we come to finalisation, and I know I have um, lots of information, uh, giving you lots of information, but this will be um, on GovReport's website, so you can review it any time you like. So finalisation is basically end of year. So I would suggest that you review your employees and review the pay runs. That's because that's the bookkeeper in me that I would be checking things as I'm going along and I'd probably be doing it every quarter. You add the finalisation tick on the last pay run. You generate the STP payroll event and you verify it just like you do every other uh, pay event. And you lodge the report, receive the receipt and then you do need to roll over the financial year. So you need to tell the software that that financial year is finished and we're starting all over again. So this is again the ad pay run. So this is the normal screen that you're seeing all the time. The difference is you're clicking on other there and you're uh, ticking the, the final event indicator. So that is all that it takes once you're happy that it's the end of the year. That all it takes is for you to tick that. So this is again the report that is generated that you have in your system to be able to um, prove that, that it's there. And you basically then go back to the uh, dashboard and 
on the right hand side is financial years, manage your financial years and you go in there and you um, can roll over your year and start off with uh, the 1st of July 2019 for the next 12 months. So end of year process is pretty straightforward. You're reviewing your wages, you're creating the last pay run, you're ticking the final event, you're sending the pay slips, you're paying the wages as normal, you're generating the report and you're lodging it and you're rolling it over. So on that note, um, I will tell you that um, GovReports has uh, support that you can certainly email for support and you can call GovReports and you've Everyone I have found is, is wonderfully helpful, always tries to help me with if I have an issue. And so I would absolutely recommend it to you. And um, I believe that is the current pricing. So it's $99 per year for the IMSTP module. Um, so Tiana, on that note, <laughs> I didn't give anybody a chance to speak but me. <laughs> Um, do we have questions from the uh, okay, from anyone? Because at the moment at, there is no question, so I am assuming that you've done really well, Deb. Uh, <laughs> but we are going to wait for questions to come through. On your panel, you will be able to um, uh, type in your questions, or you can um, uh, request or uh, unmute yourself to speak with us. I think, um, if you wish. Yes, yeah, so for questions. So I'm not seeing any questions, but um, do please review that it, it is reasonably uh, methodical, I think, and so um, I would, yeah, recommend trying. And there is a free 30 days, isn't there, um, Tiana? Yep, 30 days free trial uh, is available on um, from my website, but I think uh, most of our, the people here are uh, existing clients, so uh, right. uh, people that are on free trial at the moment or already on, on the system. Okay, we have questions for Margaret. Uh, you said it figures are entered year to date, but you enter the weekly wage. Yes, so what, um, and I'm sure Tiana can confirm if I'm, if I'm not telling you the truth. So what this, that's what I like about the system. The system lets you put in the weekly wage and then you tell it, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to lodge this period and it adds all of the wages that you've done up to that period and then lodges the year-to-date figure. Okay, and then we have questions from Rebecca. Do you ha you have to do this if doing payroll through MYOB? Um, Sandeep, for uh, Sandeep, you I believe you're online. For those clients that are yeah, yeah. using IAM, so Tiana, we can we, we are not uh, implementing MYOB file on IAM because it's going to be duplicating the payroll. So if they're using MIOB, then they have to go for the cover reports for the lodgement. Right, so they, have, so they Rebecca, need to be agents going through Gov yeah. report. Or business registering for the Gov reports. Uh, having said that, uh, Rebecca, uh, I think Deborah went through earlier with the um, with IMSDP. You can still upload the CSV file, and I believe the MYOB file is the CSV. If you adjust that file and upload it onto Gov Reports, it will come through. However, um, there are functionalities in in IEM that will not match with the the uh, MYOB. For example, uh, if you got uh, pay loading. Uh, for for employees that will not come through in IAM. Right. Okay. Uh, question. So the next question. Um, from Vicky. And this will be uh, one, I think, Tiana, the one from Maxwell, who says, "How do you um, vary the tax deductibility for employees requesting additional tax, Sandy?" <laughs> 
Uh, I'm not quite sure, Deb. I'll take this offline. I'll, I'll right. get back to him on that. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Chris. Okay, questions from Vicky. Can I just ask, so we don't need to hand out TFN forms anymore for new employees? I wouldn't say that is true um, because you need to get that information. Um, Tiana can absolutely confirm or not with me, but my understanding would be is that if you don't actually get them to fill out a tax file declaration form, you need to still get that in exact information from them. So it would be much easier to get them to fill out a TFN. You just keep that, but you don't have to send it into the ATO. You can lodge it through um, this onboard onboarding process. Tiana? Um, for Vicky, for the new employees going forward, um, if they have a MyGov account, they can go to the, their MyGov account and fill out the employer's details and answer the, question, um, you know, answer the questions, the tax file number declarations for the new employers that they, they're joining with you. Once they confirm that it is done, you can then um, onboard them on the IMSDP. Okay, um, questions from Rose. Rosaria, can you put the diagram back on the screen, please, uh, of the steps involved? Um, Rosaria, can you confirm we had two diagrams on, which was the um, the um, the IM process and the finalized uh, session process? Can you I'll confirm that? And so Deborah can put it up. I can put the end of year. The other one's a bit further back, and it'll take me a little bit more <laughs> fiddling. Yep, so it's just confirmed. So we're going through the next questions. Can you put the diagram back? Oh, that's Rosie. Sorry, Irene, if I have done the final payroll and haven't ticked the final event indicator, can I go back and edit that? Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to find that. So what is that, Tiana? If she has done the final, Irene's question is, if she, if I have done the final payroll and haven't ticked the final event indicator, can I go back and edit the, um, that payroll, that pay run? Yes, they can do that. And yeah, they can edit and they can do the update even for, with the pay, final event indicator. And so can you lodge it again, Sandy? Yes, they can. It can, it can be lodged as an update event. That's cool. Yeah, you need to mark it as an update event and also a final event indicator. Okay, next question from Rosaria. Um, the weekly di the weekly diagram yeah. steps, not the end of year. Okay, this is the right one. Yeah, done that. Okay. Um, question from Phil. How is the link with the software and the ATO set up so that lodgement goes to the right location in the ATO? It's to do with the nomination. Um, the ATO have got it set up. They have given instructions to Gov reports of how they're supposed to send the information, and it all happens in the background. Yes, Tiana. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Thank you. Um, the next questions we have is from Claudia. If an employee does not have my Gov account, do we have to provide payment summary? No. No, there is no requirement for you to provide any sort of summary to them. They have their payslip, which of course the payslip is going to have their year-to-date information as we saw on there, um, but they are allowed to ring up the ATO and ask for an income statement, but there's not, nothing that the business has to provide um, for that other than a payslip each time they get paid. Okay, I think, um, can uh, we print out Tiana, all these so instructions from Karen? Yep. Yes, Sandeep. Sorry, regarding Maxwell's query so for the additional tax. So in IAM, we do the calculation for the tax and then it is editable. If there is any additional tax, it can be I mean, manually entered on the IAM. Cool. Yes, and I, and I know that I should have done that because I did it with the super. I played with it, so yeah. super and tax tax with the same. Yeah. Yeah. So you can change them. Yes, you can overwrite. It's editable. Yeah. Overwrite it. Okay, and we have next questions from Karen. Can we print out all of these instructions? Um, 
Karen, we will be posting this uh, webinar um, onto our website. Uh, and in fact, you will also get a copy of the, the webinars recording today um, on your email, post the webinar, possibly by tomorrow. I think, and that's all the questions that I have for today. Anyone else? We just wait for a few more moments. If anyone else has any questions, um, obviously you can call us on uh, uh, on the support the 1300 number or email us to support. If you've got uh, additional questions, post the webinar, and of course, do not hesitate to reach out to us. And the guides Thanks, and government reports, I can absolutely testify that they are really great with answering things. Well, it seems like we have all the questions, answer all the questions. Again, thanks again to, um, for everyone that attended the webinar today. Um, don't forget to reach out to us if you've got questions. Okay, okay. that's it. No, I have to thanks. stop thanks, the everyone. recording. Tiana, where am I stopping the recording? That's right, found it. Okay, thanks everyone and bye for now. Bye.